I am so excited to share with you my love for cast iron cookware. In this video, I will show you how I use it in everyday cooking and baking, some simple tips that will have you reaching for a cast iron skillet every day, and how easy it is to care for. I'm going to start by showing you how I make a dish that I had never made before. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I am making a zucchini quiche. I didn't have a recipe. I just winged it and I'm just going to take you along for the ride. Actually, it did turn out quite good. Otherwise, it wouldn't be in this video. But at the time of recording, I didn't know that. I preheated my cast iron skillet. This is one of the secrets to make sure that you start with a hot cast iron skillet. And then I add oil. I like using avocado oil because it has a very high smoke point and it's just a really clean, healthy oil. Before you add anything, I like to wait until both the cast iron skillet and the oil is hot. That makes all the difference. However, because this is a fairly moisture, high content vegetable, the zucchini has a lot of water. It doesn't matter so much, but if you're frying something like a steak or if you're frying potatoes, it actually makes a bit more of a difference. So I'm gonna saute the zucchini that I grated. And the goal for me here was to get a lot of the moisture out of the zucchini. So I'm just gonna saute it until much of the moisture of this um, really watery vegetable is evaporated and I'm just going to keep on stirring it. I love using wooden utensils for using cast iron. You can use stainless steel. However, if you've ever scraped around a cast iron skillet with a stainless steel spatula, you know that makes a lot of noise and kind of kind of scratchy. And while you can do that, it's perfectly safe. I prefer wood because it is a lot softer. For the quiche part, I am mixing some eggs in a bowl. I always love using free range eggs that I get locally. And I always love, love, love the deep color of the yolks. You can see here that the zucchini are getting there, but they're gonna take a while. I wanna monitor that. And so while I'm making the cheese egg mixture on one side, I am kind of monitoring what's going on with my zucchini. I tried to grate the mozzarella, but that didn't go so well. So I'm just cutting it into the eggs with a spoon, with a knife, not with a spoon, with a spoon. I'm adding some ricotta cheese and then I'm grating some Parmesan. I don't mind the extra work of doing these things fresh because they actually taste so much better. And if you make a dish with just a few ingredients, every ingredient stands out and the higher the quality, the better the dish will be. You can see all the steam coming out from the zucchini. And this is why cast iron is so perfect because it has a high heat resistance. You can just really scorch it. It also keeps everything warm that you make in it. Back to my cheese mixture, I'm adding some salt and I'm just measuring it into my hand. I don't necessarily use a measuring spoon, some fresh ground pepper, and that will be on top. And then I have some nutmeg, also freshly grated. I have a little nutmeg grater with a little compartment where I keep the actual nutmeg on top. I'll give this a quick whirl here to incorporate all the ingredients. And I am not showing you that, but I have a einkorn pie crust. I'll leave the recipe in the description box below if you're interested in that. Einkorn is a really healthy grain, but it doesn't have as much gluten as, let's say, a modern wheat. So it didn't, uh, it actually broke in a few places when I rolled it out. I am spreading some oil here in the cast iron skillet, and it made me realize how fast the cast iron actually heats up. This is another skillet that I have. And I have rolled out my pie crust and here you can see how it wants to break in parts, but that's not really a problem. I'm not trying to win a prize here. I'm just trying to make this really yummy dish. 
I press that in there, but I did turn off the heat because I didn't want to necessarily cook the crust. I just wanted it to heat up. For the crust, it is important that you start with a hot skillet and hot oil. Here you can see that I'm adding the sautéed vegetables, the zucchini. You can probably just about use any vegetable you have, depending on how much water they have. You might not want to sauté it quite as long. And it's the perfect amount here. Also, you can see I didn't take a lot of great care to make the crust edges look really nice. Then I'm just dumping the cheese mixture right on top. And I'm going to spread it around so it's covered evenly. The vegetables are covered. It actually looks pretty good. And I'll put it in the oven at 375 until the top is golden brown and not jiggly anymore. Here it is. It looks perfect. It just looks like a quiche with an einkorn crust and a base of sautéed zucchini. I'm using a blunt knife to go around the edges, even though it actually does come off pretty easily. And I want to show you what this dish looks like before we get a little bit more into practical terms of cast iron here. And I want to show you a slice. There you have it, perfectly set. Zucchini on the bottom also makes this dish a lot lighter and super delicious. As you can see here, the cast iron did exactly what it was supposed to do. It was pretty non-stick. The crust didn't really stick to it. And we didn't finish the quiche that night. I transferred it to a different plate and dealt with a cleanup the next morning because there wasn't really any moisture that I was concerned about. Um, even though cast iron, you know, if it rusts, it's not a problem. And then I take a simple dish brush and with running hot water, I rinse the cast iron and scrub it a little bit. And sometimes I use a sponge to dry off excess moisture. Another night we had a mushroom pasta sauce with lots of cream and broth and it was a really runny liquidy sauce and this is what the cast iron skillet looked like afterwards you can see it was a little bit caked on so i might need to let the water run a little bit longer you can soak or actually add some water to your cast iron skillet and bring it to a boil it will help loosen up whatever is caked in it pretty easily here over a hot stove i put the cast iron skillet and then add some avocado oil again for its high smoke point and rub it in with a paper towel. You can always use another kitchen rag or any other old cloth that you have if you don't want to waste paper towels but this cleans it up, dries it out and then I hang it on the wall rack that my husband built for us. To make some English muffins in the cast iron skillet I'm going to show you that. I again heated up the cast iron skillet, added the oil, let it heat up, and then I am adding the English muffins. I'm also going to leave the recipe in the description box below if you're interested in how to make these. These are sourdough English muffins and they're perfect. They're so delicious. Once they're cooked on one side, I flip them to the other side. You can already tell they look fantastic. There is the lid. The lid you don't have to clean very often because it doesn't get very dirty. And I also like to bake bread in my cast iron. I have deeper Dutch ovens that I preheat in the oven for about an hour before I add the dough. And this one is the smaller one. I take the lid off. First it creates the steam to make the bread rise better. And then I return it to the oven without the lid for another 20 to 30 minutes, depending on how big my loaf is. There's the bread, perfectly browned on top, yummy looking. I also love using my cast iron skillet for frying steaks or browning any meats with a high heat. That's perfect. And here you can see that you can actually vigorously scrub around it with a stainless steel spatula. I wanted to show you that there is some stuff caked on on the inside and I am going to wash it off because I know that a lot of people are a little bit queasy and I never 
put my cast iron in the dishwasher that will just ruin it and make it rust. I mean, you can't ever ruin it entirely, but it's going to rust and then you have to reseason it and all the rest of it. If there is something scraped on that you can't get off and large cast iron makes a um, plastic scrubber that really does a good job, it often comes with them or you can just cheaply get them online. My husband got me this leather handle sleeve. And yes, cast iron can be heavy. That's one of the downsides. And with the bigger skillets, you have to use a pot holder and two hands to actually move it around. And here again, stainless steel doesn't hurt it at all. It just doesn't sound very pleasant to my ears. And if I ever need to reseason it, I scrub it. There's various methods with steel brushes or what have you to remove the rust. And then you generously coat it with coconut oil or avocado oil that I prefer and put it upside down in a hot oven at 350 degrees for an hour. And you might have to repeat this process a few more times until you get this perfect seasoning. Once cooled, they all go back on the rack, which is perfect. My husband built. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.